they're pushing me heavy promotionally wise, um, I get a big fight immediately with Paul Buentello, back injury, and I'm out for three months. So here we are. I've just been thrust in the spotlight and it just kind of dies for a minute. At this time, I'd moved out to Las Vegas to try to kind of further my career. I expected I'd be able to go to UNLV and train full time. When I got out there, I realized I couldn't do both. Um, and I really needed, especially with it being put into these bigger fights, being pushed, that I, I needed to focus just on the fighting aspect. So I got accepted, went through a, a couple orientations, but I ended up not enrolling fully and decided just to focus on fighting full time. So I'd done that, I got this back injury. I had to pull out of my first fight ever. And I'd probably had 10 or 12 fights fall out of me at this point, you know, throughout my career. So I knew what a big deal that was. That was hard for me. Um, I remember I was sitting in the Palms parking lot. I pulled over to talk to my brother about it because I just left the doctor's office. And I'm crying to him on the phone, like, what do we do here? What do we do? And he's just like, you got to follow the doctor's advice. Like that was our, our bottom line was, you know, we're not equipped to make this kind of decision. And they're telling you, you know, your long-term career is at jeopardy here. You've got to shut it down. You've got to pull out and you've got to, you've got to rehab this injury. So that's what we did. Um, to this day, it's one, of the, it's one of the hard moments for me is just accepting. Like I remember calling Joe Silva and explaining to him the situation and just hearing like the dejection in his voice and disappointment yet again, kind of in the, it just, uh, it was rough. Probably spent four months rehabbing the back injury. Um, once we rehabbed it, called the UFC. Uh, I got a fight with Mike Russo, May 29th. Um, this is a huge card. On, it's my first main card um, slot billing. A lot of pressure. It's a guy that I'm supposed to beat. Everybody's, hey, you're going to beat this guy. You're going to beat this guy. You're better than this guy. I believed him. I was behind him 100%, but I knew Mike Russo was a tough, tough opponent. He wasn't getting the, uh, the props or respect that he deserved at all. Um, so I downplayed in the media, just, just out of respect to him because I knew he was a good fighter, but I did expect to win. I, I expected to win, not easily, but I knew, I knew I was in for a fight. First fight ever that I would say that like minus, like it was just nervous about the event, not even the fight, just the event. And I, I definitely think it may have played in. I had a bad injury two weeks before. It was, it was a bad, bad month leading up to the fight essentially. Like I, uh, I tore my MCL and meniscus about four weeks before the fight. It wasn't bad enough to, to pull out of the fight, it was manageable, and, and those heal on their own. I figured I just pulled out of a fight. It's an opponent I'm gonna beat. I can go in there, I can box him up. I'm fine on my feet. I went out there and I did, I executed my game plan, what I wanted to do. Um, what I did is I made a few mistakes letting him off the hook. I let him hang around too long, and the veteran that Mike Russo was, he made me pay. Hit me with a big shot, finished me up in the third round when I'd been winning the whole fight. Um, I think it was called one of the biggest comebacks in history. I mean, I think he was in the fight the whole time. I don't, um, I don't want to take anything away from him. I think it was a great fight. Um, but I, at the end of the day, I was doing what I wanted to do. And I lost doing what I wanted to do. So you can't take away. It wasn't a lucky punch. It wasn't. Russo did what he wanted to do as well. And that was finish the fight. So first big loss ever. Um, next morning, this is the first fight, mind you, that my dad had ever got to go to. Um, he was still sick. I didn't know how bad. My family kind of kept it a secret from me at this point while I was leading up to this fight. I had no idea how bad it was. And uh, he got there two nights before, the night before the weigh-in, and we went to dinner. And I remember I saw, I, he, I didn't get to see my two of my close friends bring him to the dinner for me. And that sucked. Um, it was definitely a distraction, I guess you could say. Um, it was an emotional moment for me. Because like, while I got ready for that camp, there was a three month period where I didn't go home, I didn't see him. I wasn't that involved as I should have been. I was like, you know, you put, that, you put those stresses and those feelings on yourself. Um, Man, so I just cut out, I hugged him, I talked to him for a little bit. I remember just cutting out and going to cry in the bathroom. <laughs> um, so, you know, you got all these uh, this stress going into the fight, going to the fight, what happens in the fight happens. Um, next day, um, I go over to, I, I spend the night, um, go to the hospital. They do the, like, the MRI scan when you get, you get knocked out or whatever. I saw Russo in there, he is messed up. Arm broken, he's got stitches all like cuts on every side of his face. And he's just smiling like, man, I got lucky on that one. I'm like, eh, no, man, it's a good fight. Um, but I can't forget that one. And just like the, uh, I remember like the, the, the lab technician just being like, you're the guy that lost. <laughs> and that was kind of a funny moment and all that. At that point, um, I go home, kind of get a sleepless night. You know how it is after any kind of loss in life. You, you know, you're a, little, you're a little sad and not, not accepting it well, I guess you would say. Um, at that point, um, I wake up, I'm excited to see my dad, you know. Um, so he's staying at a hotel right down the street from me. I go see him and he's not doing well at all. My brother's there, he's stressed out. 
Um, you know, nobody really is sure how to manage the situation at that point. Um, I'd spent the most time helping him, so I kind of, we're in the hotel room, I remember helping him get to the bathroom. I remember at this point, um, it was maybe a 45 minute ordeal, just getting him to the bathroom, and I was like, nah, we gotta go to the ER immediately. We drive him to the same hospital, I just got, I just got my MRI scan the night before. Um, we come into the ER, and the guy recognizes me immediately. He's like, hey, you're still out for last night, you're back again, you all right? And I'm like, nah, we're here for my dad. Uh, turns out, probably uh, within 10 days or so, uh, we ended up putting him in hospice, I think about day six. I think it was day 10 or so, he died after the fight. Um, you manage that, you expect that to happen. You kind of knew, you, I was, wasn't as shocking as, as a lot of people have to deal with. So I, I kind of I got through that. I didn't really grieve, to be very honest. It's about a year or two later. I kind of just milled through it. I was dealing with my first loss. You know, he was gonna die. You know, everybody dies one day. It wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it didn't really hit me until about two years later. Um, at that point, four days later, my best friend, um, a huge influence for me in the sport, um, a guy that was a paddler for me, a training partner, a coach, a close friend, sudden death. So within a two week period, I had like the three biggest losses of my life. Um, dad dies, Russo fight, best friend dies. I don't know how well I handled it because honestly I think I breezed through it at the time. I didn't deal with it. I just carried on. I ended up, um, I was unhappy in Vegas. I didn't necessarily like living there or the lifestyle. Um, training was difficult as far as finding heavyweight training partners. Um, there was a good heavyweight camp out in Colorado. Um, Denver was an area that I really liked. So within a month of all that happening, um, I move out to Denver. I'm living in Denver and I'm traveling almost every weekend doing like appearances and things like that. Uh, I head to the UFC in Boston, go out there. Um, they had the first fan expo, first Boston UFC, awesome event, huge deal. I'm going through the motions, I'm not gonna lie. Like I just dealt with a bunch of stuff. Um, and you know, fans are kind of coming up to you, oh, you got knocked out, but you know, it's that, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's, it's kind of um, unnerving a little bit, I guess you'd say. It's, it's tough to, to accept these people coming up to you, like kind of giving you the you suck attitude. Uh, you know, we thought you were gonna win, that kind of stuff. You manage through it. Um, I come back, I'm cut from the UFC. No explanation why I have a bad attitude. I probably had a bad attitude. <laughs> but I didn't have a bad attitude about the sport. Um, you know, things in life weren't going my way. You get down, you may uh, project yourself in a certain way towards other people. Sorry.